on camera one. Welcome to Late Night with Bobby Tyler Show. I'm your host, Bobby Tyler, Television Intense TV. Today, we're going to have on the show Money B. Also, we're going to have on Sunny Cool with Parliament, Funkadelic, P Funk, a little later on. Man, I better have about an hour so they can get dressed, right? Yeah. So, right now, I've got Robert Sanders on the line, and you all know. Robert Sanders, welcome to the show. Robert, how you doing? How you been? Oh, pretty good. What's up with you? Good, man. Uh, oh, good. I know all my guests know that, life's been good. that you used to be the co-host on the TV show back in California. Oh, and, yeah. And the creative consultant and all that, right? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, rem yeah. you remember that, right? Yeah, back during my uh, news distribution days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On your what? Oh, yeah, yeah, distribution days. Back in my news distribution days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, was, he was a big time in the news back then. And and you also, yeah. you know, uh, you were directly related to Colonel Sanders. He he owned a lot of slaves back in the day, right? Or something. Back in the South. Man, you weren't supposed to bring that up. Yeah. Uh, all right. Did I? Ah. But I didn't hear it like the entire chicken farm, so you know. Right? You know, the guy the guy was 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 a chicken genius. He was a freaking chicken genius, if you can say that fast. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, where are you moving to now? You're not in California. Where are you at now? Oh. Uh, right now I'm, I'm on the east on the east of Akron, Ohio. Yeah, that's that, so. Oh, you know, I just been like dealing with. Oh yeah, and so it's a little bit of an adjustment because I originally left Akron in 2003, so I went to North Carolina first. Oh, you then did. And I came over to um, yeah, I came over to California about 2010. Yeah. And so for a long time. I was away from all this terrible weather, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't they have like a lot of UFOs in Akron, Ohio, and stuff like that? Pro I've been watching Project Blue Look, Book. I still Project swear Blue Book. I still swear. <laughs> I've been oh, watching. Okay, okay. I've been watching Angry Project Blue Book every Tuesday night, and they they're always talking about Akron, Ohio, and you know, UFO groups got started in Ohio and. Circleville, Ohio, and all this something, something, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know, I know. There's, I know there's like a Hangar 18, which I believe is not too far away from Cleveland. I believe. Right. Hangar 18. So yeah, so that's kind of like our area uh, 51. Yeah, that's where they keep the the. But just space. not as well known. Yeah, that's where they they hide the spaceships in the, in the hangar there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had a movie about that even back in the 70s. One time, Hangar 18. Oh yeah. Name of the movie. Yep, yep. And um, so now I know I know that you were um, designing some uh, websites and you designed some stuff for me as well for the t for the TV show. You know, what are you doing now creatively? Designing anything on the computer? Uh, yeah, yeah, more, yeah. Uh, well, recently, a buddy of mine who used to work with me, I'm uh, working at Signet right now, which is this, uh, well, this uh, jewelry place. Well, I'm off for like a couple weeks till we find out what's going to happen in terms of reopening stuff. But I've been a Signet employee for a couple of years, and a buddy of mine who left, he's uh, into coding. And he decided he wanted to start uh, making a game. Yeah. You know, so more competent of us in terms of just like graphics and 3D designing. So he said, you want to come aboard and help make some models? So I figured this out and figure out the little universe that we're making for this game. So I said, cool. So Nice. Um, you know, I, guess, I guess I have a lot more time. To do that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing uh, Agent Under Fire. Uh, video game 2002 so it's the cutting edge state of the art video game right now GameCube GameCube yeah that's what I'm playing <laughs> but, oh. I, but I do got my signet ring oh oh, oh. I'm working with the 
cheap now. But I did get my sig okay. signet ring. <laughs> I bought this. I got eight thousand dollars on my pinky ring. I got a good deal on this so from from one of my sponsors. So, but yeah, yeah, that's a good video game, you know. 007, James Bond. Agent under five. Yeah. Shoot him up. I like the big old uh, phaser photon cannons and shit. Because you, know? <laughs> you can fire them, and, and you don't even have to shoot at the person. It'll, it'll find them. It's like, it's got directional, yeah, stuff like that. So, um, have you been over to Africa again lately, or...? No, um, no, no. The um, last time I've been over to Africa was, let me see, it was about 2015, and I was, of course, over there for about, no, let me see, what was it? It was like close to nine months. Anyway, that was when I was still married. Um, wow. Me and my wife were divorced since then. Yep. Yeah, I got two divorces coming up under my belt almost. Yeah. <laughs> Work, what, what I'm are, working on the second one. Yeah, I'm, oh, work, I'm you, working. I'm working on the worse. second one. I'm always looking for the next ex Mrs. Tyler. You know, so I gotta, gotta keep my eyes peeled, right? Yeah, you were in Ghana, right? Not 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 uh not Guiana, but Ghana. No, 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 thankfully not Guiana. No. I was uh, um, actually she's from Togo, so that's Togo. where we were most of the time. But that's but right that's right next door, right? That's, that's, that's right next door to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and, and and so I was close. No cigar. I fucked up. I mean, I was wrong. Uh, Nigeria. No, 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 no. Because we did. Because we did. We did visit over in Ghana. So, so. Yeah, it's pretty close by. I don't yeah. know. I forgot it was Togo. Yeah, 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 yeah. My my bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Maybe I'll get to go over there sometime. Yes, you think, so you think? I like. So you think all those Af so you think all those African countries look alike, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I just figured you got to be from Africa, right? I mean, just look at you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. You, no, you yeah, tell me about this. Tell me about the goat head, the goat head uh, salesman over in the marketplace. <laughs> For the doc, the witch oh, doctor, the witch no, doctor, no, no. witch me, doctor, me the witch what? doctor. <laughs> Oh, let me see. Let's, which which doctor? They have like this market. They have like this market over. Oh my God, they they've got like this market where you can't get all the like voodoo stuff. Right. And I mean, hell, you can find like freaking gator heads and stuff. Anything that you want is like. I wouldn't be surprised if they had like mummified human bodies. I bet if I asked for one, I'd be like, "How dare you say that?" And then when you come to the back of an hour, just, yeah. <laughs> comes back over to you and whispers in your come back and <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this is a wild marketplace, yeah, but, man. Oh man. But I, I think Oh man, I, I did see some stuff over there. I actually saw and I, I kid you not, I actually have the video, okay? So later on we get the chance, I'll port it over to you. Okay. Alright, here's what happened. Um me and yeah, me and the ex, we were we were visiting um, one of her friends over on someplace. I think it was like the west to where we were. But anyway, we went to visit one of her friends. And then after we left and we were on the way back, we were going down the road. And I saw this um, this uh, big bonfire not far away from this intersection, like on the other side of the street. So... I'm just looking at it, and, I, and this is not the first time we've seen, like, bonfires because, you know, they'll burn um, trash and some rubbish there. Right. This so is... we're, uh, going past, we're going past, and so so Yvonne, she just nonchalantly says, oh, they're burning somebody over there. Yep. I said, what? I said, yeah, um, <clears throat> there's, they're burning someone there. I said, what are you talking about? No, they're, they're just, like, uh, burning some trees or some garbage or whatever. And she says, if you want, I will run uh, uh, drop you off here so you can see. Oh my God! And so I call her bluff. I say, yeah, right. I say it's just, I say it's just garbage. Look, they do it all the time. So right. and, and, and like, she turns, she so she turns the car around, goes on down the other side of the road to get back there, and I step out. Now, now my first clue is, you know, I've seen people burn garbage before, but 
would you really need that many cell phones and people standing around it just for garbage? Right. So, yeah, that was my first uh, signal that something might be off. <laughs> then, then while I'm looking at it, I say, I'm like, wait a minute. Is that in the flames? Is that the out? It almost looks like the outline of a human skull. But no, it, it, it could not be that. Yep. So then I'm walking around while these people holding their cameras and gawking and everything. And I say, that is clearly a human leg sticking outside of there. And I'm like, this is a body. <laughs> yeah. and, and so I'm taking a uh, film of this. And she, and meanwhile, she went over to the two policemen that were um, sitting like right beside the headquarters. And, you know, they just have their... Um, their hands under their chins like some defeated little kids and they got their um, assault rifle strapped to their backs. They're wearing their uh, green, uh, their all draft military stuff just looking all defeated. Right. Anyway, she went up and she talked to two of them. They found, then when I got done taking video, she told me what happened. It was like there was a rash of, uh, what you would call it, of tribal. robberies from Ghana. These, some of these people, there was like a group of thieves. No, it wasn't Come, tribal. But, but they're coming in from Ghana. To, um, they're coming in from, but they're coming in from Ghana over to Togo to rob people, right? Kind of territorial, right? Like robbing. Yeah, but this, but, but, but this is, but this is, but this is the bad part. You know, that's bad enough. But they have machetes. So I mean, these guys, they come in and hack the crap out of people on their bikes. You know with uh, their machetes, leaving people dead or maimed or something like that after a severe machete. And then they grab their um, motorbikes and steal their motorbikes and then head back. Damn. So they happen to see a, motor, uh, a motorcycle thief um, absconding with a motorcycle. And so it's like, oh, no, that's it. That's freaking it. So you see a crowd of people just jump this motorcycle thief all sides, and they just savaged the hell out of them. Yeah. And when they got done beating them to death, they um, put them on the bonfire. Right. Now, the cops, they couldn't do anything just because it was like a crowd of people. I mean, they could pull out their guns and um, shoot everybody. get taken down by those people. Yeah. Try, yeah, or shoot everybody. Yeah, shoot and like 39 people. So, shoot 38 people and walk yeah. away. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You just shooting this big crowd of people. So at that point, they couldn't really do anything about it. So they could only um, just uh, wait there until somebody, some more people came to grab the body or whatever, at least their veins. So, that, wow. Yeah. So. Yep. I've seen some videos. Like, yeah. So yeah. So it was like it was like. I've seen some videos. Yeah. So yeah, like it was that. weird. Though. It, I mean, I seen this horrific video mm -hmm. in Vietnam of. Something that was going down in Africa, but they were burning the people alive, and it was like really horrific. I mean, they were like, you know, it's like kind of a some kind of a, probably the same kind of thing going on. You know, somebody had robbed somebody, or you know, but the same thing, but a little to yeah. like one level up, up another stage, I guess, or something. But really horrific. I mean, oh my God, right? You know, it's crazy. You know, I mean, yeah, and, and it's. Yeah, and, and that's why, and, and that's why, I mean, it's like, you'll see, you'll see, a, you know, you'll see, like, um, the most you'll really see is, like, some pickpocketing. I mean, I got pickpocketed before, but... In the market? And I mean, just, yeah. like, some little light crimes like that or something. You yeah. Really see, yeah, in a market, like, yeah. in a busy market. Yeah, it's a lot it's of like this, big like, crowd. It's, um, yeah. market square, it's on the side of the building. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually, it was kind of like a fair because you had like a lot of appliances there too and job fairs. So it was at this um, big indoor market. And so you had people like, there was like no room between. Everybody was sliding around you. So there was like plenty of opportunity to pickpocket somebody. <laughs> yeah. They get, they, you know, it's, it's easier, it's easier to get away with. So, so when you were, when you were coming up, when you were little, who were like your role models and your heroes, and who inspired you? You know, when you were young, I know you like those scream movies and stuff oh, like that, right? So, <laughs> let me see. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe, well, maybe, well, maybe, quite, maybe, but maybe, maybe. What's the I, guy? I kind of like Darth was it, Vader. Was it Freddy Krueger? Yeah, I knew. I knew it'd be somebody <laughs> gruesome. Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like science fiction. No. 
I like no, no, Darth Vader. I mean, Darth Vader was a villain. Darth Vader, <laughs> he was a villain, but he had some style to him. You know, he had that um that cool black cape on, the deep voice, and everything like that. Right. I mean, I, th- I mean, I mean, we had it together, you know. Yeah, I like that. I like at least until the third episode where he came out. I like I like science fiction and I like um, I'm actually I like science fiction. I like comedy. Oh yeah, science fiction, comedy, and horror movies. Uh, yeah, that's I, the kind of stuff that I like. I actually I'm actually goofing around. I decided um, a couple days ago there was like this little idea for a little short story I was going to do and then read it on off on and put it on YouTube. So. You know, just because, I mean, a lot of people are doing like those, like, start doing those creepy pastas. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's like a little blog or something? Uh, creepy pasta, that's just, uh, that, that is a particular channel, and there's actually a Mr. Creepy Pasta, but it's a general term, catch all term now, for people who will, like, read these, um, little scary stories or whatever, and then they put them up. Right. You know, like, uh, alien or some kind of creature or ghost or whatever and I'll put the little scary stories up like that so that's, a, that's up my alley all I gotta do is read stuff See, um, make a little short story and read it all I told, I told you to go to Trink and Steakhouse with me because I don't watch the horror movies and I'm hanging out with this guy I didn't know who he was, it was David Arquette but you would have recognized him because you watch all those Scream movies and stuff like that right I didn't know. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sitting there talking to him. I didn't know who the heck he was. Yeah, yeah. Till the next day, then I find <laughs> he was hammered. Yeah. Sorry, David. Yeah, yeah I would. I would have recognized him too. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I didn't know. I I watched Shark Boy and Lava Girl, and I still didn't recognize him. And he was in that. <laughs> he was in that one. What kind of? Speaking of Tranka Steakhouse, what kind of food do you like, man? Do you like sushi or what kind of uh, what kind of uh, cuisine? Or restaurants or food, do you like? Especially since it's on, everybody's on lockdown, you know. Mm. Oh yeah, it, it's uh, me. I, I, I consider myself a bit of a connoisseur, even though, like even before I got married, but especially afterwards. I mean, there's all sorts of um, stuff like vegetable paneers. I love Indian food. I love um, there's several African dishes that I've eaten just just being married and everything and going around. I remember one of them, those dishes probably saved my life if you really want to know the truth. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm willing to try anything, right? I do love sushi. I like sushi, especially you have some nice uh, salmon mm. sushi. Right. Oh, yeah. It's the best. Yeah, I also, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a connoisseur or I'm some kind of a sewer. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big sewer. But I, 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 uh, I, I, uh, I like, I like, I like, um, sushi and, and, and I've eaten everything. Like in Vietnam, I've had like grasshoppers, mealworms, scorpions, uh, duck embryos, pig's blood, no, chicken blood, pig's intestines, oh. cow's stomach lining, Thanks. all that, all chopped up and they call it pho, you know, well, pho that, right? <laughs> so, you know. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> because a lot of people see it would say that when they see it. Yeah, they go, what the, they go, what the fuck? No, it's, it's like when I was younger. Oh, fuck. I mean, I mean, no, it was like, it's like when I was younger, you know, I, I my, um, growing up with uh, my mom and my grandmother lived in the house with us, but with me and my mother, sister. So my grandmother, she's from Alabama. She was from Alabama originally, so. I got to eat like a lot of that southern stuff. Um, right. Hog mocks, of course, which is the um, jaw, pig stomach. Oh, it's the stomach. Your chitlins, which is the intestine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hog mocks. Well, hog mocks. That's what they call the um, well, the stomach. That, okay. That's what she called it. I didn't it know anyway. that. Yeah. The chitlins, of course, of course, the intestine. Yeah, I know that part. I've eaten yeah. the feet. Yeah. The ears, the snout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've had. Nearly everything except for damn oink. So hey, hey remember, remember? No, no, I haven't. I haven't touched. I haven't touched the uh, testicles. So remember? that's the only thing I have. To eat. <laughs> My dad probably had. 
Remember, remember when we went to that party in Vallejo and I said, they said, they offered you some potato chips. I go, what are you trying to kill him? He has high, high blood pressure, all that salt, you know? Then they tried to give you some ice cream and I said, no, no, he's yeah. lactose intolerant. You're going to kill this man, right? And then they, they said, well, do you want some cashews? I go, man, he's allergic to, to nuts. And, and they're, they're like, every time they brought you some food, they go, how about some prawns, some shrimp? Man. He is seafood intolerant. He will break out and bust out in boils if you give him. And, and, and you're like, huh? What? Every time they offer you some good food, I'd, I'd say, oh, he can't have these things. <laughs> they, they go, here, have some more chocolate. I go, he has diabetes. Do you want his legs to get chopped off or something? You're going to kill this man. You know? And, oh. <laughs> then finally, finally, you got some, like, some, uh, we had that chicken and watermelon and some good food, right? Finally, eventually. But I, I cut you off for like, <laughs> How long? <laughs> I was like, and they were like serious. They're like, "Oh shit, I don't want to hurt him." <laughs> but and, and the only thing, and the only thing I had a problem with was actually the shrimp, because I, because both my mom and my uh, dad both had like a, a bit of um, a shrimp allergy. Oh, so I wasn't. So I was. I was. Shrimp, it doesn't. So I was correct. I was just joking. The shrimp you I, was right, the shrimp. I was just joking. No, no, the shrimp you actually got right. <laughs> so I did save his life. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, was, he's here today because of me. No, I'm just kidding. That was the, <laughs> saved his yes, life. Yes, you did. <laughs> now, 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 with the shrimp, now with the shrimp, now with the shrimp, well, it, it's like, it, it's, not even, it's not even that bad for me, but what happens is the inside of my throat gets itchy. You know, you're scratching, oh, but you can't wow. scratch anything because it's yeah. on the inside. So you're like... Yeah. Get, like get, you have like a, get like a toilet cleaner yeah, like, or a toothbrush. Like you have a cold or something. Get a toothbrush. <laughs> you remember that restaurant? We were at uh, Subway and that guy came in with his dog and was talking all like he was hallucinating. And, yeah. I, go, and, I, and I said, hey, what's your dog's name? And he goes, dogs can't have a name. I, he goes, you can't own a dog. He says, yeah. and, and I go, oh. And he remember, and then he goes, you come in here talking about God? I go, what are you, dyslexic? I didn't say God, I said dog. You know, and he was like, and you had a name for the guy, I forgot what it was. You had like a, you called him Mr. Something, something. Yeah. I forget, it was a funny name. It'll come to Yeah, it'll come to it was a long time ago. I was talking like six <laughs> years, seven years, eight years ago. But I was, that guy was tripping on some kind of drugs. It's like... He's still in town. I still see him around here with that dog. And he puts a hat on the dog and a jacket and glasses. And that dog's all hot and he's out in the sun. And he's doing that to make money. <laughs> Torture that dog. Oh, yeah. You can't own a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Ah, uh, man. I, I mean, I remember, I, yeah, I remember sometimes when we, uh, be up at the Salvation Army, and you know, yeah, up there in that Napa, the one near uh, the square or whatever. Yeah. I remember one time I'm walking past there, and they're actually in and out dog food. They had it in pillowcases. Yeah. I mean, and and that, so they they were able to provide for even like the homeless people's dogs there. And I mean, it's funny because that makes sense because sometimes I walk down the street and there have been like several homeless people there and there might be like a dime or a penny on the ground and nobody even touched it. Wow. Like, what? I pick nobody it up. Nobody touched that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I pick it up and you want to know, you want to know what got me to picking up pennies? Yeah. This is this and this is I crazy. do it. I do it all the time. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, it was like, Later on, after I had left Napa, when I returned to uh, California, I was down in uh, Haywood. This yeah. was after Yvonne had got a job um, down there at Haywood, so yeah. I decided to get a job there since it's where the apartment was. I didn't have to do any traveling or sleeping overnight. So it was like I got the security job, and it was like 30 minutes, not even 30 minutes, it was 15 minutes, sorry, 15 minutes away from, from Oakland. Anyway, when I go up there, um, see. yeah, yeah, the uh, the uh, owner of the buildings up there. Sometimes I'd be walking with him, and, and we just have some uh, conversations and everything like this. Is up at the Lampwork Bluffs. That's the name of the place. But anyway, the uh, guy was uh, he just saw like this penny in the uh, parking lot, 
and he picked it up and he said, I don't see anybody claiming this. And then he just uh, held it up to me and he said, these all add up. <laughs> and, <I'm, laughs> and it's crazy. And you want to know the crazy thing about this? And I kid you not. Months before, when, when me and Yvonne, we had got this apartment up in American King, and we stayed with somebody there when we were uh, checking out some areas and I was trying to find a job right. and everything like that. So we, um, we went to some um, motor home. It's a trailer home or whatever. And we lived with somebody there for a little while. So the uh, guy who lived there, he was um, he used to be into, what should we say, uh, urban pharmaceuticals. <laughs> so he had some money. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he was dealing with, yeah. <laughs> so he, yeah, so he, yeah, so he was a, so he, so he's a former dealer. So anyway, the uh, guy was telling me about how he was hanging out with this uh, one buddy of his, and the buddy was in the real estate. So he was thinking about taking some of his money since you know he had already got like a lot of money before. And he was going to put it into real estate. And, making a killing there and he, I guess he'd be able to go legit completely with all the money that he had from his uh, other uh, work. Right. So sometimes he would even hang out with his buddy's uh, father and his father of course <clears throat> t- uh, taught um, his buddy the um, game of real estate or whatever. So anyway he's walk- walking that, down the street with this guy and the guy and he tells, and he was telling me about this. And mind you, this was months and months and months before I even got the job in Oakland. So anyway, he was telling me this old guy um, was—he was walking and talking with this old guy. Now let me let me segue for a minute so you understand. This guy, he saw thousands of dollars a day, okay. And so sometime he would uh, go out with his friends. Well, I mean, with, not with his friends, but with his, uh, girlfriend and his, uh, children. And they would get on a ferry, go over to San Francisco and go shopping, go to restaurants. And at the end of the day, when he starts spending up all that money, he had nothing but like tons of uh, change quarters and dimes and nickels, just loading down both pockets, you know, just uncomfortably sloshing around his pockets. So he said he would be tired of just carrying around all this change. So he'd take his pockets full, and he would just, like, dump them into an alleyway somewhere so, like, some homeless people could get them or whatever. So he had, like, all this change. His pockets would just fool. He'd just, like, dump all those quarters and dimes and nickels out. So, you know, so he's used to seeing, like, a ton of money. He was used to seeing a ton of money passing through his hands. Right. So anyway, he's walking his uh, buddy, I mean, with his buddy's father down the street, and the old guy sees a penny and picks it up. And he looked to him and um, he said, I know you did not just stop to pick up a penny. You know, and the old man was like, these all add up. Yeah. And I kid you not, that just, that just, as soon as that happened to me, the exact same thing, I'm walking with the owner of this uh, complex not even the same guy, it couldn't because this guy was uh, is Greek. The um, other guy he was talking about, that um, the, the um, other guy was talking about, he was Jewish. This old right. man was Jewish. Right. So they were two completely different guys, <clears throat> yet both in real estate, obviously, and both stopped to pick up pennies. Nice. I was like freaking floored because it like hit me. I remember what happened on. What did you? Say? I, mean, I I kid you not. It was, it was like almost freaking supernatural. I don't know right. what that meant. Yeah, I, I pick up I pick up pennies. I got one. I, I probably picked this up yesterday. And the pennies, like the difference between being a millionaire and not being a millionaire. You're only in a ninety nine point nine 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 error, you know. And if I gave you a, if I paid you a yeah. penny to, to uh, help me with a website or something today and then tomorrow I doubled it, two pennies, and each day, you know, four pennies doubled it, right? Within a month, you would be a billionaire. A billionaire. Yeah. You know that? Just doubling that penny <laughs> every day for a month, you'd be a billionaire. <laughs> it's amazing, right? People don't think of that, you know. Uh, I better, I better get going. I, I got, a, I got another, I got another guest coming up on the show, and I'll probably put it into a different segment. So this will just be your segment on on YouTube, Pinterest, Google, LinkedIn. 
Facebook, blah, 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 Twitter, you know, <laughs> all that, right? And it'd be probably on regular TV in about a year. Yeah. I've got so many shoots in the, in the bag now. Um, I do I did bring you your 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 favorite your favorite headshots, and I got I got all of the uh, all the the uh, I got to do I got to do the um, the shout outs for the um, the sponsors and the and the people that 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 so. Guest of the television show, stay in touch. Transportation provided by Skype. I'd like to thank my guest, Robert Sanders, right here. My co-host from the past, a blast from the past, and now he's Space Ghost from the East Coast. And also, I want to thank my, <laughs> my used to be the West Coast. I got uh, my sponsors, Audio House, Napa Gold and Silver, Emmy Lou's Diner, um... Auto City, Polished Nails and Spa, Doc's Trophy Shop brings in these trophies every freaking weekend, right? And uh, they're cool. Uh, Sal's Flower Shop, remember him? Bring in the flowers every every freaking weekend, right? Sal's Flower Shop by the high school. Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. He's cooler than the other side of the pillow. Boy, howdy. Hey, Sal. And then we got Hair in Motion, uh, Dr. Frazier, my chiropractor. And pretty much, eh, we're out of here. So God bless you and yours. Till next time, America. And I'll, uh, I'll play, I'll play a little uh, music, and roll us up out of here. Pretty quick. I got, I got a song. This, 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 this is a pretty cool song, actually. This is my next guest, Sunny Day, ladies and gentlemen. If not, I'll have Sunny Cool on instead. <laughs> <laughs>